Hare Krishna, welcome. We're going to be talking today about contact follow-up. Now, we're beginning here with some words from Srila Prabhupada, who said, our first objective in ISKCON is to systematically propagate spiritual knowledge <coughs> to society at large and to educate all peoples in the techniques of spiritual life in order to check the imbalance of values in life and to achieve real unity and peace in the world. He also gave us another object for our society to propagate a consciousness of Krishna as it is revealed in the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, we highlighted these two, three words here, systematically and propagate. What does propagate mean? It comes from Latin, propagare, meaning to multiply from shoots. Or in other words, to spread an idea. So, what we're talking about here is how to take the efforts that you make in making contacts, in distributing books, in getting people to come to your festivals, to your temples, and to nurture that so that it becomes a growing shoot that propagates and spreads and bears fruits. So I got some ideas for this some years back, reading about what they did in the UK in 1985. At that time, there was a mood around the world from the BBT trustees to try to develop more follow-up. Okay? So they made an experiment. Excuse me, get my directions here. Of course, devotees are going, they're distributing books, and they ask people for their names and addresses. The most interested people, they got their postal address. They handed in those names and addresses at the end of the week after they were di distributing, and that data was entered into, I quote here, a very expensive top-range 1985 computer, which probably today would fit into uh, you know, the palm of your hand. But for them, it was quite, uh, quite a new thing, a computer. Right? So then they used that to send out a complimentary copy of the Back to Godhead magazine. And with that, they asked people, well, if you like this, we'll give you another two issues. A, uh, a free, free uh, three-month trial. And at the end of those three months, they were invited to become an annual subscriber, and they were also invited to join what was called the Friends of Lord Krishna newsletter. So now, the results of this were that 10% of all those that were offered the three-month trial, in other words, they got the first issue, and they were offered, uh, please come in. Uh, they were offered uh, two more issues. So 10% of those who were offered it, they actually, they took it up. They said, yes, I, I like the first issue, let me get two more issues. 10% of those who took up that offer, they actually subscribed, they paid for a subscription. And 50% of those people who subscribed actually joined the tech. So, and I've just noted here that even today one of those persons is a temple president and another is becoming a sannyasi. So these are significant results, significant results from following up on book distribution. Now today, what's happening? I'd like to ask you in the audience, what, what, what is your experience? Do you have any special experience in your own area of doing any sort of follow-up, or do you know of any sort of follow-up activity? Of course, it's significant if none of you know of anything that's also telling. Anyone? Any follow-up going on? Well, for, let me ask any outreach. Are you doing book distribution? Yes. You're distributing books. Are you having festivals? Yes. Are you inviting people to come to your temple? Yes. Are you following up with the people who receive books or come to your temple or go to a festival? No. <laughs> you have some email. Yeah, Facebook and email. Okay, so you have something there. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to improve that. All right? So why don't we do this? What's, what are some of the reasons we don't follow up with, with our contacts? 
Any any reasons you like to throw out here? People who are not doing this. Yes. Maybe there's no one person in charge of just doing that service, and so nobody does it. Right, there's, there's no one assigned to do it, so it doesn't get done. Any other uh, obstacles you find? Well, let's say, why, why should we follow? What are some of the benefits? What, what can happen if we do follow? We follow the person who came first time or second time. They feel that we are concerned of their coming. Uh, we become a welcoming friendship and uh, we have a chance for them to come temporarily. Right, right. So we, we're nurturing them. They have a chance to get going further. What's some other benefits from following up on contacts? Yes? We will get no devotee. Excuse me? We will get a new Krishna devotee. We, they'll become devotees. <laughs> How about that? What's one of our themes here? More devotees, happier devotees? So how are we going to have more devotees and happier devotees? We have to cultivate. We simply plant the seeds and we don't cultivate the, these seeds. And we, first of all, we may not get any harvest at all. Or what's another possible thing that happens if we don't follow up? What might happen? Maybe that seed or that, that fruit, the fruit that comes, goes somewhere else. We uh, uh, had this in a... Any of you were at the Effective Outreach Seminar? You, 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 you saw, we have the uh, actors, right? <laughs> anyway, they, they, had, they showed how someone at the end, because there wasn't any good follow-up and things were very hodgepodge, they said, well, maybe I'll check out some, some other spiritual path. Because it's not, it's not working. Okay, so what can we do? This is our core message here. If you take anything out of this seminar, please take this one key strategy. When you plan the outreach, plan the follow up. When you're planning book distribution, plan how you're going to follow up. When you're planning a festival, plan how you're going to follow up. When you're opening your temple, inviting people to come, plan how you're going to follow up with the people who visit. Any, when you do Harinam, and you, you're out there and somebody gets interested, plan how you will follow up with, on that person. People visit your, you have a restaurant, how will you follow up? So when you plan the outreach, plan the follow-up. Now, there are different approaches to follow. The first one is the individual approach. It means the devotee who, who makes the contact, who, who, who distributes the book or meets somebody in the temple, takes personal responsibility to follow up with that person. So this is, this is really the ideal. There are devotees who learned this type of approach many, many years ago. There's one devotee that, I, mean, I don't know very, know very many of these devotees. There's one called, his name is Anagadundavi, he's in Italy. And for 10, 12 years, he's been following up with people that he distributes books to. And every year, he sells them more books. They advance in Krishna consciousness. They become devotees. Through his follow-up, he's made dozens of devotees and continued to distribute books on a regular basis. So that's the individual approach. But that takes a certain kind of individual to begin with and it certainly takes time. Uh, the other approach is a team approach where you work it out that the devotees who are making the contact, they work with a team to do the follow-up. And so they're not necessarily individually responsible. They could be part of, a, of an effort. This is especially appropriate for volunteers who, who are coming to your festival and they're just doing some volunteer service. They, they're not in a position, they may distribute a book at the book table, but they're not in a position to do the personal follow-up. So they hand it in to a team which is responsible. And the third approach is that if you can't do any of these things, then think about outsourcing it. 
Uh, we're, I'm here on behalf of the Outreach Committee, GVC Outreach Committee, and we are in the process of setting up service centers so that if you can't do anything with the contact, the name and the address and so on, we'll do our best to at least use email and the internet to follow up with those, those people. So these are the different approaches. So as we said, when you plan your outreach, you plan your follow-up. So first of all, when you plan, you have to plan in the context of the, of the context. Is it book distribution? Maybe different type of plan than it is for a festival or a temple visit. One of the key elements of your plan is that you've scheduled and you've prepared the follow-up program before you actually begin the out outreach so that you're not trying to catch up afterwards. And one of the special ingredients is if, if, if it involves some sort of a, an event that you have that ready to invite people to when you make that contact and you have that follow-up ready to go. So now we're going to get into, we, we call this seminar five steps to follow up, so we're going to go through the five steps. Number one, you have to set your goals, meaning you know, where do you want to take people? Do you want to bring them to a special introductory program, a, a temple visit, maybe just your Facebook page. You just want to get them to come to your Facebook page. Or maybe if you're really um, ambitious, you could say, you have the resources, you want to visit them in their home. This is especially applicable if you're doing a door-to-door -door book distribution because you're already at their home once, you know where they live, and if you can you know, prime them to uh, receive you another uh, two weeks later, you come with some prashadam, ask them how they like the book, give them a phone call first of all before you come to let them know you're on your way. This is an excellent method of follow-up. Uh, consider, as you're making your, setting your goals, please, we ask you to please consider how to help people take advantage of the books that they received, and consider what are the steps Okay, first step, starting a relationship, making a, you know, having some relationship with a devotee. Next step, making inquiries. Next step, maybe attending a course. Next step, probably temple visits. For most of our streets or out, outside contact, depending on your temple, <coughs> depending on how your temple is organized, might not be the next first step. You might want to first bring them into something a little more neutral, uh, that is you know, more comfortable. They don't have to take off their shoes. Uh, they can uh, just be comfortable with. So set your goals. Then the next thing of, in, in following up, you have to have something to offer people. People are not, I mean, if I came up, you'd say, give me your name and address. Give me your email. What for? Yeah. Why? Why should I? I mean, it, it, it's the, the next obvious question is, well, what, what do you want that for? So we have to offer people something when we ask them to give this their contact information. So what do you tell them? Well, there's lots of things we can offer. We can maybe, there's, uh, if, if it's an email, we can offer them something that we, they can download, uh, send it directly to their, to their email address. It may be a special event. We're having this uh, event uh, coming up in your area. In, in three weeks or in a month, we're going to be holding this yoga, meditation, uh, conference or seminar, workshop, whatever, and would you like to attend? Uh, here's an invitation. And please, if you give me your contact information, I'll remind you about it and send you more information to, so that you're, you, 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 how to come. Uh, it might be just, just you know, if nothing else, just join our mailing. Would you like to be in our mailing list to hear about future events? Or here's another one which is, uh, can be very uh, successful as a discount or something free, like a, a free lunch, <laughs> a free dinner. Uh, in New York, the devotees there had, this is where they had Govindas in 55th Street, the the book distributors were given a number of these free dinner cards. And they were said, well, that if you meet somebody really interested and so on, give them one of these. Those people would come and they would become devotees. Many devotees came out of that effort. 
And of course, you can fill in the blanks here. Be creative, do what you, whatever. So again, as you're defining your offers, be considerate of all the different kinds of contacts that you have, because the offer may be different for, for different kinds of contacts. Uh, we, we suggest that there are people who are hot, they're readily, they just, they're, they don't even, in your, in your uh, skit, I think you, you had somebody, he was saying, uh, how do I contact you? You know, somebody who already asks, how do I, how do I follow up? Then they're hot, you want to make sure it's your duty to take care of those people. Then there's those who are warm, their, their interest is more casual, but they're open to, being, to follow and they're willing to give you their information. You have to give them some offer. And then of course there are people who are a bit reserved. They, they're not ready to give you any information. They, they took a book or they came, they just, they just are browsing you know, your festival site, they're just looking at the Harinam. They're, 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 not, they're not ready. But you can give them something that they can take action on. So they can take the first step uh, to follow up when they, when they choose to. So next, after you've, you've, you've figured out where you want people to go, you've defined what you're going to offer them to get their information, then you have to plan out the whole staging of the follow-up system. Of course, the first step is you have to collect the information. You have to find what to collect, uh, how you will collect it, will it be something like this, a little stay in touch card, uh, we'll send you samples, we have a sheet to sign up at the end and we're going to send samples of various things. Uh, this one's very nice, it's from the UK, and it also has a little circle here, level of interest, so, so the, the devotee who collects this can circle off, you know, is this a number one or this is a nine, oh, pop. Okay, uh, you want to define what is the first follow. What, what are they going to get? You'd like, ideally, as soon as this information gets entered into your computer system, and if you need a computer system to, to do successful follow-up, uh, unless you have a lot of time and writing ability, uh, so a computer system makes it a lot easier. And computer systems also give you the ability to kind of automate the first follow-up thing, which would be maybe an email, thank you very much for, uh, for getting our book, or uh, maybe an SMS message, or if you really have the resources, then, then a phone call. And of course, what are the next steps? Uh, what, one, two, three, four, planning it all out. So planning your stages, and then of course, now you've got it all figured out, what you want to do, but you've got to get it done. So you have to assign the various roles, for example, there's the distributors, those are the people making the initial contact. They're the coordinators, the persons who are organizing the follow-up. There's the case managers, we call them. Uh, these are the people who then take responsibility, and it may not be the same person who is the distributor or the coordinator, but they, they're taking some responsibility when an individual makes some efforts and starts to come forward. Somebody's going to take responsibility to lead them along, to cultivate them. And, of course, there are people who are mentors who are who really can uh, mentor these these new people you need resources you have to have materials for data collection things like this you might have a free gift that to offer if that's in your plan something that uh, for example um, Rathiatra Philadelphia they had a very nice idea so everyone what's the most What's the most attractive thing at the festival after the Roth has arrived and all the chanting and everything is done? What's the main booth at a Roth Yatra festival? Prashad. Right? If, if that, that's got the biggest lines and... Okay. So at the Prashadam booth, where you're going to get, if not everyone, you're going to get almost everyone, they gave everyone at that booth a little card something like this, and said, pick up your free book at the bookstall. Right? So, of course, then it had name and address and contact information. And so what they did, people out of, I don't know how many uh, plates of prasadam they distributed, 
not sure about that, but they got 350, 400 people to come to the book table, get a little book, and deposit their contact information. Of course, those people who got that book were also at the book table now, so they get to look at the books and their, you know, there's add-on sales, so it increased the sales of books also. So all together, the free book paid, paid for itself, and they got the information. So that's a, uh, a way to use a free gift. Of course, you have to set up your database systems. It's good to have a, your web, if, if your website is all, not already set up really nicely for new people, and if you are involved in your temple website, I, I encourage you to do our seminar on effective ISCOM websites, which is, I think, day after tomorrow. Uh, arrange a dedicated email address so that people who contact, they, they, they get an automatic response, and make sure your Facebook page is set up. These are some of the resources. You may have many, many others. And of course, once you've arranged all this, you have to implement it. You've got to do it. But once you implement it, you really need to try to count and measure, and so that you analyze your results. We showed you in the first slides, 10% of those people who uh, got the first issue, they signed up for the three issues. 50%, 10% uh, of those, uh, they bought a full subscription, 50%. Those numbers give you a sense of what's working, and then you can refine, adapt, and go do it again. So here are a few examples of some cards. Uh, this is just a simple one. I'd like to know more. This one says, uh, would you like to do a survey? A survey is another great opportunity to engage people. You say, we'd like to follow up with you and uh, see how you liked what we have given you today. Would you be willing to uh, receive a survey from us? And that's great information. They fill out that survey. You've got a lot of information about them. Cards, having uh, everyone who's out there should always have some sort of a card that they can just give to somebody that has their name, follow-up information, ideally their personal information, not necessarily your personal email address, but an email address that your temple has set up that's like so-and-so at ISCOM Atlanta or at ISCOM Tallahassee or Boise Chicago, whatever. You know, th this is a special address that is meant for this follow-up purpose. And it might even be a generic address, info at so-and-so, so that the, the, the one person gets it and there's, that it's uh, not missed. A ticket. A ticket is an interesting thing. You can offer, well, we're going to have this, this event, and here's your complimentary free ticket. There's, there's a uh, limited seats available gives another kind of incentive to, uh, to come. Uh, so then we talked about events. You can have events that are advertised like this on some of the web programs. This is a meetup page. I don't know if this is in America. Other places may have similar type of things. And so you can invite people like that. Or uh, here's one that uh, we did called the Bhakti Experience. This was for Philadelphia. So this was at the Rathiatra, this invitation was given so that two weeks later they could come to this, uh, this uh, event. And these are very good to have. What's this? Who knows what this is? QR. 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 Okay, this is good. The, the first time I said that very few people do. QR codes makes it, uh, it's, it's makes it easy for people. Uh, Facebook. Very powerful tool. This is an interesting follow-up strategy that has been pioneered now. We're working it in London in the UK. You can read about it on ISCOM News. It's called Fortunate People. So you see all these people here, right? They were on the street. Devotees were there. They distributed a book. They said, uh, I take your picture and click. Right? And uh, it'll go on our Facebook page. Here's, here it is. Like it. See yourself. 
share it with your friends. And then what the devotees are doing is they are looking out for the people that they distributed books to, to see if they did like the page, and if they did, then, then they start to engage them in a conversation. So that's another uh, very powerful way. Uh, your website, of course, maybe it's a special website. This is a website from the UK called Krishna Wisdom, and it's set up by the UK, and it was especially designed for follow-up. Uh, this is another one that we're working on from Outreach Committee. It's not yet uh, quite ready. Called aboutmybook.com. It would be a generic <coughs> one that anyone could use. Uh, and then there's one more that the Canadian devotees have done, like this book on the street. Something that you can handle. So it's something that for people to come to as a first place. Now, so we've given you the five steps, simple steps, but. This is what we're talking about. This is not something new. Any of you have been in sales? Any sit? You've been in sales. Any, anyone? Sales people in an organization. Not just on the street selling, but I'm talking about organizational sales. Sales and marketing. So, sales and marketing people are doing follow-up all the time. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the technology of sales and marketing, right? So they have things called funnels, like this. <laughs> you have people who are inquiring, and then they're targeting, and segmenting, and scoring, and nurturing, and, and bringing them out until they they're close the deal, and so on. I mean, this is a sophisticated, it's, it's a standard process. And you, as marketers of the holy name and the Krishna consciousness, if you want to go further, become professionals in this field of follow-up, then learn from sales and marketing. Learn about, learn, go to the web and just learn what people are doing for lead nurturing. In the context of today's marketing terminologies, what we used to call contact follow-up is called lead nurturing, okay? Nurturing leads. Inform, educate, involve, validate, convert, keep alive. Nurture your leads. Grow them. Okay? It can get quite uh, sophisticated with automation. You can automate many of these pro pro uh, processes with new leads that are coming in. Uh, a pool of content from your Facebook page and your website and your email and broadcasting and so on that is going out to these people. They're hitting different milestones. That, you know, they downloaded this or they asked about that, and they finally get to the ready stage where they're ready to to uh, yes, I, I want to take the course, or yeah, please come and visit me at my home or whatever it is that you're trying to bring them along to. And you keep nurturing them until they're, uh, they're with you, they're devotees. So this is called marketing automation systems, and you can learn about that. So you learn about lead nurturing and marketing automation. This is just an example of how we might be doing this to, to have face-to-face -face contacts and the website invitation and how it goes. It, as I said, it's a little sophisticated. I'm not asking you all to become sophisticated marketers overnight. But if you are serious about follow-up, this is where you can aim to go. So, as I said, there's outsourcing. You may not be able to do all of this. So we, at the Outreach Committee, we intend to become very sophisticated. We intend to have marketing automation systems uh, with a, there's a whole internet team getting set up to uh, probably it will be actually a ministry that's just being proposed to the GPC now uh, the, to have a ministry for the internet that will provide all kinds of services where you may be able to do some of it like you can do face-to-face -face contacts, face-to-face -face meetings maybe you can call on the phone but maybe you can't do online live help <laughs> that's, you, know, just, you don't have the resources 
or perhaps you don't even have the resource to do online sales, to, to sell a book over the internet, you might not have that. So we intend to set up so that you will have your own way to sell books and, and nurture people and follow up with them through a service center organization. Another one of these services will be courseware. So we're working on developing online courses that you can plug people into. Under one of the uh, uh, headings that will be there is Bhakti Life. There'll be also an ISKCON Academy, a Krishna courses, different things that are according to different audiences. <coughs> and then if you get really sophisticated, <laughs> and meaning more in terms of manpower, you can do what the Mormons do. And they offer, you can see here, request a free copy of the Book of Mormon, right? To request missionaries to deliver your free copy. They don't mail it to you. They go to your door and they deliver it. And they share the message of Joseph Smith. So that's a very uh, powerful thing. If you, if you, if, again, in the area of sophistication, you want to build your database, here are some free, uh, powerful CRM systems. What do we mean by CRM? Who, who knows here? No one knows what CRM is. Okay. Contact, or it could be constituent or customer, whatever. C is contact, or in our case, relationship management. So CRM, contact, relationship, management. How do you use the internet to manage your relationship, to track? All right, we met the person today. We sent out an email that day. The person responded to the email. Automatically it gets recorded in your CRM. Response received, clicked through. We sent another email. The person signed up for a course. Click. The sophisticated CRM systems will weigh these interactions and assign people ranks so that when you see that a person has done XYZ, then you'll get an email saying so and so has done X, Y, and Z, time to give them a call or reach out personally. So if you have 400, 500 contacts came through a, uh, say a festival or something like that, to call them all up, you want to funnel them, right? So this is what these systems do. And uh, they do get a little sophisticated. So either you, if you want to use something like this, you need to have in-house technology, or you need to find a service provider, and then there are many. We can help you with that, too, to uh, you know, connect you with a, uh, a provider that can host everything for you. You don't have to worry about it. They'll, they'll train you, and so on. You have to pay for that, of course, but it's, it's not so much. A few hundred dollars a month, and you are really good to go. So this is me, and thank you. <laughs> and we have some time and you will uh, have for questions uh, and answers. What's that? Well, you don't need to go back to that because. <laughs> 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 An extra one. I've got to get a few more here. And not only that, but follow up. We want to follow up with you. So please uh, leave your name, your address, your email address, and everything here. And let's see, who did you get one? And so, questions. Let's see. Anybody else? Any questions, comments, concerns? <laughs>
Yes. Uh, I just wanted to share something. Yeah, please. Go ahead. Subhubadi, when Subhuti Krishna is one of our outreach committee members and has been very successful in his own uh, Facebook uh, system follow up. So, anyway, you feel. Um, there is a website, of course, in America it is active now. Uh, but you can also, at least to get some ideas, it's called loyal, loyalblocks.com. You know, what they do is, uh, they give you a website whereby there are various offers when people come to the temple first time. So they, they sign, they also sign for loyal blocks and you are also signed for loyal blocks. So every time they come to the temple, automatically their card is punched. So second visit, third visit. And then you can design your own offers, you know. First time I'm welcome, we get prasadam extra laddu, whatever, you know, some book, some laddu, whatever you want to visit. Second time, you, then you can say five times somebody visits, you get this, ten times, so like that, you know, it keeps the interest on and they don't have to do anything, automatically you will have a gadget at your place, when they walk in, they are already punched. You can see, you will say two visitors in your store now or to your temple now, like that. And then who are those? You can just find out, you know, and then, so this is a very good thing. Of course, you have to pay for that, but uh, especially if it's a temple having a restaurant and store or gift store or whatever, it's very, very good. We are using it at our uh, temple restaurant in uh, Tallahassee. And people get excited, you know, they come and they ask, how many, how many things, oh, three, okay, so, can you one herbal tea free? <laughs> And then you send your friends, you bring your friends, referrals. So this is just one idea I thought I would share with you. Take a note, loyalty. Because you, yes. whether you have loyal blocks in your area, but everywhere this is it. Loyalty Card. cards, loyalty systems. And they're very, thank you very much. That's really good. It's really good because this is something that, that you can try out in so many different, if you have the, the opportunity to get the kind of software system, but even if you just have a punch card, you know, like just if you print yourself, you it's can still print something. Print. I'm saying this is an idea. You don't have to go to lawyer box. Just see there and you print your own thing. Yeah. Yeah. At the counter, you tell people like that. And so like a punch card, like one hole, two hole, or kicks or whatever. So that way, like for example, in our restaurant we have, you buy six meals and the seventh is free. So we keep picking every time they come, they bring their friend, you know. Like that. Those things can be useful. I don't, I, actually, I don't have the other funnel. I'll have to put it in. <laughs> because in the other, there's another funnel, which at the bottom of the funnel is not the sales. That's the one before that. It's the advocate. Okay. It's the person who has bought your product, has become a loyal customer, and is now referring other people. And that's actually one of the main ways we spread Christian consciousness. And uh, also in this funnel, uh, let me also show you that also. I work for Home Depot for some time. And they have this training. How do I, I was in the cabinet making department. So they trained us that uh, how you close, what are the steps. So in that, which I am not seeing here, the most important step is objections. Why are they not closing? Like that, you are interested in Krishna, why you are not coming? Get the objections from them. Why? Why? And once you get the objection, then you address that objection. Then they become alright. Every time. So at every step, you have to find out what is the objection they are having in not taking the next step. And once you know the objection, then you can work on that. <laughs> because people generally will close the deal only when the objections are taken care of. So then this is important when you're planning your follow-up. Exactly. You think about what are these audience, what could be their objections? 
and then you, you, you've got it already, you know, oh, well, it's too far away. Oh, but we have uh, this, you know, this transport system. Oh, but it's, uh, you know, not the right time. Oh, but we have, this is another time we have it. Oh, but, you know, I don't know anything about this. Oh, but, so you, you anticipate their objections and you, you plan this. Thank you very much. Yeah, Tallahassee is a university place. So when we invite the university to students, we are about 5-6 miles away from the university. So first objection is that no transport. So immediate we have a solution. There is a shuttle. You tell us, are you ready? I will send. And we ask one of the congregation, Prabhu, can you click, pick up two, two boys who are there? <laughs> so this is how you tackle that. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. So what, what, when is our, we have till 11.30 or? 11.45. 11.45, Pandit. Yeah, but I think we have to end at 11.30. Yeah. So we want to ask some of you to start giving us some ideas. You've heard all of this. What would any of you do differently? Once you've heard of this, would, yes? Um, just on the contact They wouldn't have the number to call or anything. So what I came up with was a bookmark. So instead of a, it's the same thing, same format. It has the contact, temple contact, personal mail, and everything. Okay, so it's very good, very good point. So instead of a a contact card, you know, something that they, it's a bookmark that you put. A very good point. I, I should. Yeah. And also, um, in our country, our address is not in the books because. We just start, we're not on the map, so we actually stamp our contact details into the front and the back of every book. Okay, so yeah. Everything is yeah. You put it in, you stamp it into the book? We do that also, plus... Plus the bookmark. Yes. Okay, good, good. And the bookmark has a quotation from Bhagavad Gita. Good. Yeah. Now, he, here's another thing to think about. This is a, uh, and, and we have a few of these, you can, you can pick them up, and we have more in our outreach booth. This is a uh, new card. It's a, uh, a mantra card for Harinam. I'll just read what it says here. A sacred street party. It doesn't say Harinam a Sankirtan a Jagya. <laughs> it says a sacred street party. And, and it says. This song, it doesn't say this mantra, it says this song is as old as the hills and is known as a mantra or healing sound taken from the oldest wisdom tradition in the world which will bring you good fortune. That's, that's it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Worth celebrating, right? For more details, visit KrishnaWisdom.com. So, when you design your things, a Bhagavad Gita verse, certainly that's nice, but maybe something you're thinking about your audience. They, they're maybe the first time. We got from quotes, uh, from famous quotations, our quotations. There's some famous quotations. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, you know. Uh, like Radhanath Swami Maharaj's quotations are a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, same message, but then a little bit Language. Different. Learn the language. We, we, you were all there this morning with Dev Amrita was talking about innovation. So for us, our innovation today may be to learn how to talk about Krishna in modern terms a little bit better. It's not a huge innovation, but it is actually... To some extent, it would be innovative for many of us who are accustomed to talking about Krishna consciousness in a language which is not so easy for people to understand. Yes. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, in fact, you're going to get, provided you sign up. Here, <laughs> You'll be getting a, a PDF-ready versions of these things, so we can provide you the InDesign version, you know, so you can change the the you know details of it. Uh, this this particular card, we're good. This is from the UK, and they are changing this because they they did the card, and 
they put this beautiful picture of Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda, but then they took a few looks at it, look at this at, from the eyes of a uh, of a person on the street, and uh, they said, hmm, "Naked ladies, yes. <laughs> long hair, slender bodies, wearing dresses." <laughs> you know? So. Wasn't quite the right message, you know. People who are not familiar with it. Thinking about who your audience is, crafting your message to, to fit them. Another very really effective way of uh, follow up to a large number of persons, a dedicated person from the paper is required, is a recorded message in the phones. You know, especially for all your events and all. Like Alachua, I get all the time there. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not from Alachua, but from Alachua, whoever goes to Alachua once, even if you are in Washington, you get that. <laughs> so you, you have different, that, that's not for your first time contact, but, but still, one, one question that came up in, a, in a, uh, one of our other seminars was, what about those who just don't make progress? Do you just keep following up on nurturing those people who, who they come to the temple once or twice, they come again, they come again, and they just remain on the periphery. And in this, uh, one of these slides you see here, there are people at different stages of their receptivity. And successful salespeople continue to nurture, especially with these lower cost automated systems, people who are not ready to take the, the next step, but they can be nurtured along. And as long as they don't, here's, a, here's something that uh, may surprise you. Um, it's advised that you periodically re-opt in your mailing list, your email list. You can accumulate lots and lots of people. But, of course, some addresses just bounce off and they're no good. But it's advised, if you want to really use that mailing list successfully, that at a certain point you ask people to reconfirm their interest. And in that way, you can also deal with some of the, those people who aren't responding. And you have now a more targeted uh, you, you know, just the fact that they reconfirmed their desire to receive your newsletter is an indication of their interest and it, it bumps them up. So any others here who, who are now going to go back and do something differently? Any, anything you may take out of this that you think you might implement in your center? How about, let me ask you, where are you from, first of all? I'm from Dulai. Uh, Guru Bayor, about to know it's the territory. So he's on he's, a, he's our, on our chair of our committee, so I'm sure he's working with you. But I hope that uh, now you can help him better. Do you have some ideas? Well, say one thing. Okay. How about you? Uh, Where are you from? I am from Guyana. Guyana? Yeah, probably. Good, good. Any other 
comments. Otherwise, we'll end a little early, and you can go and worship. So, yes. So all these presentations, presentation, if I want to share the same presentation with our team, then. Yes, we're going to send you a copy of the, you're going to be able to get this whole presentation. Uh, it'll be on the GBC website. And by, this is Vaishnava Seva Prabhu, I forgot to introduce him. Uh, he is behind this Gun Desire Tree and all those wonderful websites that uh, I hope you're taking advantage of, including our iskanoutreach.com website which we're just building up right now, and most importantly, our Facebook group. This kind of outreach group on Facebook, we have a page also. Please go and join our group. In fact, we're going to join you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> automatically you'll be added to the group. We're going to put you all in the group. The group, the best advantage is that whatever is put on the group, Email goes to all the members automatically. So you will keep getting links from all over the world. So please join that group without fear. Well, it, it, well, don't leave the group because we're going to add you. Right? <laughs> no, when I'm there, I'm just sometimes, you know. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, if, if we don't have it or you can invite other people, once, once we have joined you or you've joined, you can invite your friends and join them. So let's build this group, ISKCON Outreach, where we talk, we discuss. We share things, we'll have files like this. Excuse me? It's a closed group. It's a closed group, yes. It's a closed group. It's not, it's internal. It's not a public group for people to... Uh, anybody, anybody wants to join, we'll have to have So it's a if nice safe want, place. If you want to send somebody, then you should send a reference to your reference. Then you know that you are sent, so we'll accept it. Otherwise, it's Yeah, this is, this is we, we want to build our... Network, outreach network. We are. We'll have to. I don't know if we'll use that name, but our member, uh, one of our members, is Jayatanka Swami, and uh, he's he's saying we should call ourselves the Outreach Unified Team. Out. <laughs> hey, whatever. We'll we'll figure something out. But we are we're a network just within the bigger network of the strategic planning. We're hoping to build with you the outreach. Uh, is kind of outreach strategic network. Any other comments, questions? Thank you very, very much. And don't leave without signing up. <laughs> <laughs>